This is Clovacast Episode 7, Final Fantasy XIV's revamped combat system, Morrowind Early Access, and other stories. Hello gamers, I am a little under the weather today. I woke up with a pretty serious sore throat and um, not much of a voice, so I won't be talking as long here. But I wanted to go through some of the things that have been happening in uh, gaming recently. And phone. Uh, what has happened recently is Square Enix had one of their latest letters of the producer. It's where producer Yoshi P goes on live, usually late at night, but he was on during the day from Hamburg, Germany, uh, where they're having a, a special event for the coming expansion for Final Fantasy XIV, which is called <clears throat> Stormblood. And they were detailing information that a lot of us in the Final Fantasy XIV community have been wanting to hear for a long time, and that is what is Square Enix doing to revamp the combat system? Now, the reason why they need to revamp the combat system is because it's becoming overwhelming. Uh, especially for certain jobs like Summoner, where the number of abilities there are just overflows in the number of toolbars that are available. And it's becoming way too complicated for players who use gamepads. Because on the uh, PS4, you can use the gamepad only for that game. And on PC, you can use either gamepad or uh, keyboard and mouse can play it like a traditional MMO where you just press keyboard buttons to activate uh, actions where you can use an MMO mouse or a, a, a touchpad like a, a Razer Nostromo or uh, the Logitech G30 D um, forget that I've got one I haven't in a long time but uh, one of the gaming keypads for MMOs and RTS games and I use a gamepad because the cross hotbar makes playing the game really simple and you can move around with the joystick and use um, the other analog stick to look around. I use a Steam controller and it works really well for me to use the pad and the A, B, X and Y buttons to execute commands off the cross hotbar and it actually works really well. But again, there's only a limited number of buttons available and a limited number of toolbars available and it's starting to become overwhelming. And it's putting a lot of pressure on players, especially keyboard and mouse users. It, they're, they're not enough hot bars to go through and it's becoming really complicated. So what Square Enix has had to do is they had to go through and look at all the abilities that are not being utilized or being underutilized and they're getting rid of them or they are merging them with other abilities uh, one other thing that they're doing is with Final Fantasy 14 1.0 which you can't play anymore because it was shut down with 1.0 they had an extensive system called the cross class system the cross class system where basically you could borrow abilities from other jobs. Well, they changed that with 2.0, with the current Final Fantasy XIV, where you could use only certain abilities based on whatever job, your job or class you're currently playing. And in order to get those abilities, you had to level up a different job up to a certain level in order to have access to those cross-class skills. Those, those abilities well they're eliminating that requirement Do not have to go through and start let's say you you need um a certain ability for bard or if you need a certain ability for um black mage there are certain requirements to activate those jobs where you have to have another two, one or two other jobs leveled up to a certain level in order to activate them they're eliminating those requirements. 
and they are taking the cross class abilities they're toss, tossing them away and they're creating these roll abilities and what you would do is you have a selection of pot you have a uh, bar five that you can activate and you can pick and choose among different roll abilities what you want to use you can pick and choose which ones you want and there are different se different selections for dps healer and and ranged magic they're getting rid of some abilities they're getting rid of and i thought i turned my phone down they are getting rid of some abilities such as um raging strikes they're getting rid of that uh, that's got some summoners up in arms because raging strikes is um a good chunk of their dsp their damage and um of course that comes from us archers and bards and they're, they're that takes out some of our extra damage as well but things are significantly changing the rotations are changing for a lot of jobs how they do their abilities um, are changing significantly bard appears to be changing a lot our songs are changing a bard has utility songs there's the army's paean which regenerates which currently as of the 2.x as 2.x 3.x bard's abilities there is the army's paean that regenerates tp and our our tp is used for uh, certain attacks and then the, we have mages ballad that regenerates mp that's helpful for healers black mages don't need it black mages do not need that because their rotations regenerate their mp switching back and forth between umbral ice and astral fire regenerates their mp in umbral ice their mp regenerates fairly fast which is why black mages are so darn dangerous is because they never run out good black mage never runs out of mp and then um our faux requiem song uh, adds a debuff that makes enemies vulnerable to magic and that's a good song to have if you have summoners or black mages in your party because it makes their spells hit harder and then there's wanderers minuet now as of 3.0 wanderers minuet was introduced and what this did was it turned a bard into a turret it made all of your attacks all of your abilities spells or it gave not spells but it gave them a cast time and this killed your mobility whereas bard could run around and attacks you had to stand still and it gave you a cast time but as a trade-off it increased your potency your damage output and there were certain abilities that could only be used while wanderer's minuet was um activated and if you wanted to move while attacking you had to disable wanderer's minuet and that cut off part of your uh dps by doing so and you even had an ability uh, trap jaws which put your uh, status uh, effects back onto the enemy you have wind bite and venom wind bite and uh venom bite maybe getting that wrong but you have two attacks that add dots to them to uh, enemies that slowly drain their health and you have trap jaws which reset the timers on those so you'd have to reapply them every time that's only available while wanderers minuet is active so they're changing that they're getting rid of the cast time. Uh, they also um they also added a cast time to uh the machinist another ranged dps that uh, uses a gun instead of a bow they're getting rid of the cast time for them with the Goss Barrel add-on. So where are we get our mobility back? Venus is getting a flamethrower in different abilities. And they're changing Bard's songs. It looks like the 
songs have a direct effect on the mobs. What exactly the songs do, uh, they have not detailed yet. They haven't told us exactly what the songs do, how, what changes were made to them. Now, another problem with the combat system as it was, uh, when players are in raids, they get tunnel vision from having to focus so much on their dots, having to focus so much on their cooldowns and all their, their status um, indicators and they're missing mechanics, boss mechanics. They're missing when the um, attack lines appear on the ground. Or the, you know, they need to dodge. And some of those attacks, especially in the, um, the Savage Raids in Alexander, some of those are instant kill. And some of them are missing them. And you know, if you lose one party member in those, you can lose the entire raid just one member dying cost you the entire raid so in order to alleviate that problem Square Enix is implementing the system where they have a meter that in the in meter that appears on the screen and it's different for every job and it shows you your different statuses it has different countdowns and cooldowns and indicators for your abilities and it's different for every job. So, and you could place it on the screen, you could enlarge it, you can move it around, you can make it um, invisible when it's not in use, and visible once you go, in it, go into combat. And it makes it easier to see your the, the stats that are the most important. And they're getting rid of some of the others that are just fluff on the side that most people aren't even using. So, there's just major changes there. Summoners getting a very big change. I mean, the, the internet is blowing up right now over Summoner because of the because the um, job ability video that was released with the live letter shows them summoning a full Bahamut to their side temporarily, and. You can already use Dreadworm Trance to do a um, to do a massive attack, to dish out massive damage. But it looks like they're able to do two sets of those, and then summer, summon a larger Bahamut and execute what looks like a Terra Flare, which is a much bigger version of the attack and a much more devastating one. So. Uh, summoners have been worried about whether or not their DPS is going to go down, but it looks like it may not. So, lots of changes. Um, nobody really knows that much about the new jobs, the Samurai and the Red Mage. A uh, Red Mage, it looks like you have to keep balance between dark and white magic. And once you build up your meters, you can execute special moves such as uh, direct melee attacks with magical effects and uh, uh, Samurai looks interesting. Samurai is uh, Very interesting one. I used to play Samurai in Final Fantasy 11 and I uh, subbed Dancer with that and that made Samurai a beast uh, Dancer had abilities that restored TP and uh uh, samurai were TP of TP eating machines that used it a lot in attacks, and your ability to restore TP as you fight. I mean, that made you an unstoppable killing machine. So, it remains to be seen if it's similar in this. Uh, it is a DPS class, it's not a tank class where it has not introduced any new, um, any new tank or healing classes with this expansion only the two new jobs they said they weren't going to do that again um, after they did heaven's word they weren't going to introduce that many jobs because when they released heaven's word just before heaven's word they released a new class and a new job and then they had the the new jobs come from the uh, expansion so they did like 
they had all the new jobs that came from the expansion. They said they weren't ever going to do that again. No, because they had the rogue, the rogue, which became becomes the uh, ninja class, and then they had the astrologian, the machinist, and the dark knight from Evansward, and they weren't going to subject themselves to that again. So they were only only introducing two new jobs for now. Uh, will they introduce any new jobs with uh, the patches that will come between 4.0 and 5.0? Possibly. Who knows? They may introduce some new stuff. So that's it with Final Fantasy XIV. We'll know probably more when Square Enix has their... Um, when Square Enix does their show at E3. Recently, they, they've been doing more at E3. Uh, now that uh, Electronic Arts is basically doing their own thing on their own outside of E3. So then, and then there's Bethesda. Now, I recently picked up the upgrade to Elder Scrolls Online <clears throat> to uh, Morrowind. Now, it, technically, it's a pre-order. Now, I normally do not promote purchasing a pre-order. But uh, this is an MMO. It's, it's, it's a different case. For a single-player game that will probably not, no one will be playing within a year or two, I don't recommend buying pre-orders for those. So this is an MMO. This is a game that's been around for a couple of years and will be around for several years more. And so I picked it up, and it was not expensive. Because I'm an ESO plus member plus upgrade version was cheaper than the, uh, the full version. And it's fairly simple. Just logged in, picked it up. It was automatically applied to my account. No code to activate or anything. Just boom, it was automatically there. And I created a Warden character, which is a new, uh, a new character that uh, has some nature-based abilities. Some um, animals to attack, different things. I'm still learning that particular class. Classes are not as strictly defined in Elder Scrolls Online as they are in most other jobs, most other uh, games. Um, they're not as strictly defined. There is no real dedicated healer in the game, although there technically is one that has a lot of healing abilities. But you can spec your character any way you want to where it can be a healer, even though its initial role is not meant to be one. And you can take up a role of DPS, tank, or, or whatever you want use whatever kind of weapon you want but uh, I decided to do a warden because the warden automatically starts in Morrowind now the reason why you have to buy the Morrowind expansion is because it's an expansion it is not DLC now the previous add-ons to uh, Elder Scrolls Online were free to ESO plus members these were just DLC you they downloaded with the updater they automatically downloaded with the updater and you purchased them through the crown store but right? you, you you bought crowns and then you'd use them to um, buy the uh, DLC which is Orsinium the Dark Brotherhood the Thieves Guild and the Imperial City I think there's one other I forget which one or it might be one Possibly, maybe, probably not. But uh, you you pick those up in the crown store. Now you don't pick this one up in the crown store. This is a full expansion. You pick this up either uh, retail or you buy it online. And it's once you purchase it, it then once you purchase it on the Bethesda site, it will then download via the launcher and install itself, and you'll have full access to it. If you have an existing character, you'll get a scroll that will let you uh, activate a quest 
that will take you to Vardenfell. Or you can start with the Warden class if you're in early access for getting the pre-order to uh, immediately start on Vardenfell. You, you, sh you get off the boat right where the game starts in Elder Scrolls Three: Morrowind. The same building is in front of you. You're in the same town. Uh, I used to remember the names of all the towns in Morrowind. I played the heck out of that game back in the day. That was my first Elder... <coughs> Excuse me. That was my first Elder Scrolls game. And it's still a, a high bar, a high mark for a lot of people that they use to judge all the other Elder Scrolls titles that have come since. They used it judge Oblivion and Skyrim and it's still used also as a way to judge all other first person RPGs that have come out since then. There have been a few not a whole lot but uh, I have to say Zenimax did their homework I think they understood that Morrowind was a game that's very beloved by fans it's for Bethesda, what Final Fantasy VII was for Square Enix. It was the game that really thrust the um, Elder Scrolls games into the, into the mainstream. They had two other games before that, Arena and Draggerfall, that had their niche audience, but not a lot of people knew about them, not a lot of people played them. The first time people played Morrowind was when they played the first time they played a Elder Scrolls game is when they played Morrowind on PC and the original Xbox. And that was their first experience with that universe. And people remember it and people still cherish the game. You can still play it. You can get it. Uh, I have a mod that upgrades the graph, that modernizes the graphics to the original Morrowind. I did a video on that on my channel here and you now people love it so Zenimax knew that if they didn't get this right that the fans were going to rip them the pieces for it and so far looking at it I'd say they they've got it right uh, the layout I recognize the layout in the initial town um, I then went to Vivek City. The, my quest took me to Vivek City. And I have to say, you know, it is set. The, the timeline is <clears throat> the timeline is a few thousand years before uh, Elder Scrolls 3. So not all the ziggurats that are a part of the city have been have been completed. So you see the city still under construction. And you'll see the moonlit in the sky, really high up in the sky, it has not dropped down because of the diminishing powers of the tribunal. And and the music, the music is a mix of new and old. You still hear some chords from the original soundtrack for More Wind and. You still hear some of the original chords in the new soundtrack, and it's very nostalgic. Uh, there have been some graphical improvements. They have not implemented DX12 yet. DX12 support is on its way. They haven't implemented it yet, yet but they have made some improvements to the lighting, uh, to the shaders. They made some made some graphical improvements there, so that it looks it's a beautiful looking game really really good looking and uh there have been some other changes i'm still trying to figure out what all else they've altered for the expansion because they've done more than just add new content they've they've um, made some other changes i'm still trying to figure out exactly where a lot of those changes are in this because still exploring because they haven't told you everything of what they've done and, and the quests i've been on have been um um, a little interesting, a little uh, better than just fetch quests that um, 
know, nothing but a never-ending fetch quest that we've been playing in, uh, playing in the, uh, original ESO. Those were, go do this, go, go get that, uh, go activate this, here and here and here. There's been a little bit more involved sort of quests where you do a little bit more than just this and this and this and this. Um, go activate this shrine, go pray at this place, go uh, drop this off at this place. It, the fetch quests appear to be um, what I've played so far in, in the few hours that I played before the server, before I had to go to bed before the servers shut down for maintenance which I'm gonna check here in a little while to see if maintenance is over what I've seen so far is that at the uh, Zenimax is actually uh, they've actually made a lot of improvements so I've reached Balmora Balmora is um, actually the first major city you go to in the original Elder Scrolls game and beautiful place. Not quite as big as Balmora was in uh, in Test 3. That's of course, you know, uh, that's of course understandable because that was during the um, reign of the Empire and this is like long before Talos is born. This is long before Tiber Septim's time. Long before then. So, I haven't seen the rest of uh, Vardenfell, and based on the map, based on the map I've seen, it looks like they include all of Vardenfell Island. So it can go into the Ashlands and go up to uh, the far north of the island, where there was some nasty stuff there. I mean, there was some creatures there that would basically kill you really fast. Uh, <clears throat> And the visuals, the, 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 the countryside, the deep level of detail, the density of the forest is a lot higher than what I've seen in most of the other parts of the game. It's beautiful. This looks like Vardenfell. It looks like Morrowind should look the way it looked in, in Test 3, but a little more. I am really impressed with what Zenimax has done. And of reviews so far uh, for the expansion have been very positive. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online has really, you know, gone up in quality. It's become a premier MMO. No longer this one that people point at and laugh. It's a good MMO. It's one that you could easily recommend to people. Oh, I recommend it. It's it is um, not a free to play MMO. It is a pay to play. So would you buy the game? Uh, you can get the full retail package that includes the Morrowind expansion, and it'll give you early access to get into the game. You can get a, um, a regular edition or an ex or a special edition that includes a lot of extras. So you, you even get extras with the pre-order. I got a few a few extras. I got like a, a costume, a wanderer, a, a warden's costume for my character. I created a new character for it. I may go back and um, bring in my existing character into the game. Because of the one Tamriel update, or Tamriel Unlimited, I can go anywhere and um, my level will be um, synced, whatever the level is supposed to be. This area, and you can start out as a level one in Bardenfell. You don't have to be a really high level character to uh, go to that region, although I've seen better rank characters running around on Bardenfell. <clears throat> So, that's all been going on, and um, as you can hear from my voice, I haven't been 
well. It started yesterday. And I uh, woke up with a sore throat. I don't know. I'm not sure why. And it went away. And I woke up again this morning with a sore throat. My voice sounding like this. And um, so I think I've got myself a summer cold somehow. But uh, I'm currently still in the process of working out the next episode of Glowing the Professor. want that to be a good one because it's, it's about a subject that's fairly important. About how AAA game development needs to change because it's become, un it's become an unsustainable arms race as one person had described it. One person in the industry had described it as a as a um, unsustainable arms race. So it needs to change doesn't mean that we can't have good AAA games, it just means how they're made, and just basically how they are produced. We need to rethink the formula, because the way things are right now, the budgets for these games are just skyrocketing out of control, and the way it is, if a company pumps in you know, millions and hundreds of millions of dollars into the development of a game and the game bombs if the game bombs and it doesn't sell that will instantly bankrupt a lot of the big companies because they put so much money into it that would be the death of companies like EA or Activision because they put so much money and resources into a game only to have it all go down the drain so that needs to change, and that's what the episode's going to be all about. I'll have that out uh, fairly soon. Um, since I do the voice acting for that, I'm going to have to wait until my voice clears up. Or, uh, <clears throat> oh, wait until my voice clears up for doing that episode. All right, all right. So, so thanks for watching. This is... Uh, I've gone on a little longer than I was really wanting to. My voice is starting to really bother me. I wanted to talk about what was happening with Final Fantasy, what was going on with Elder Scrolls online, because those are the two things that I've been being an eye on recently. And uh, I'm going to have to, uh, some of the other videos that I do for Gamers Bay, I'm going to have to pull back on doing some of those until my voice clears up a little more because <clears throat> this is really starting to get to me but thank you for watching thank you for putting up with my awful voice and i'll see you guys next time.